Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next, we're going to be talking about these four descending motor pathways that go out to skeletal muscle, and those are the reticulospinal, vestibulospinal, rubrospinal, and tectospinal tracts. The first two that we're going to be talking about are both medial tracts. Those are the reticulospinal tract and the vestibulospinal tract. So let's get going. The first one we'll talk about is the reticulospinal tract. This is two separate tracts with opposing functions, and the two tracts are medial and lateral. Now, the origin of these tracts, both of them, is the reticular formation. Remember when we're naming these tracts, the initial part of it, sort of the prefix of it, so to speak, this is where it comes from, or the origin, and then its destination is the last part of the name. So at, this tells you that it goes from the reticular formation to the spinal cord. Now, here in the picture, we see the reticular formation in the medulla, but the reticular formation actually spans from the pons down through the medulla. So this one right here that appears to be originating from the medulla level of the reticular formation, this is actually the lateral reticulospinal tract. Uh, there would technically also be at some level of the pons, reticular formation as well, and the medial reticulospinal tract would come from that. But they both would sort of run together, and you can see them coming down here from the brain stem, down into the spinal cord, and so on and so forth, and they eventually go out to skeletal muscles. Now, the reticulospinal tract has division of labor, because the medial part of it, um, which arises from the pons level, this is going to facilitate voluntary movements and increase muscle tone. So for some movements, in particular ones that will involve proximal musculature, like the shoulder and hip girdles, if you want to cause a muscle contraction or increase muscle tone, uh, that may be facilitated by the medial reticulospinal tract. But in contrast, the lateral portion of this, which arises from the medulla level of the reticular formation, this inhibits voluntary movements and reduces muscle tone. Now, in general, the muscles that are controlled through the reticulospinal tract are ones that we said manage gross proximal motor movements. So we're thinking very large muscles in the hip girdle, so the glutes maybe, and in the shoulder girdle. Now, these two tracts are active during activities like walking. Why is that important? Walking uses what we call a stepping pattern generator. What is a stepping pattern generator? Well, if you think about it, your left leg moves, and then your right leg moves, and then your left and your right. And so we have this alternating movement of left leg, right leg. You could also think about this as extensor flexor, extensor flexor, extensor flexor, and it's an alternation of those contractions. So if an extensor is needing to contract, then the neurons coming from the medial reticulospinal tract will activate the extensors, but at the same time, the lateral portions which inhibit muscles should be inhibiting the flexors in that limb. So that way the flexors don't compete and reduce the efficiency of the extensors. Likewise, at other portions of walking, when the flexors need to be activated, well then those are going to be activated via the medial portions of the tract, and then the extensor should be inhibited via the lateral portions of the tract. And this alternating type of activation, inhibition, and so forth that we see with flexors and extensors and so on and so forth, you get the idea. That is the reticulospinal tract. The other area that the reticulospinal tract is going to be active are APAs, or anticipatory postural adjustments. Uh, we see this with fast forward reaching, so self-initiated perturbations, um, and neck reflexes. If you don't know anything about APAs and you want to learn about those, uh, there's a video that I'll have on my channel, so just search on my channel APAs and you should be able to find those. So anticipatory postural adjustments. The second one we're going to talk about is the vestibulospinal tract. This also has two pathways, a medial and a lateral, and they both arise from vestibular nuclei, uh, which are mainly going to be in the pons here. So right here you see the pons, here's the vestibular nucleus, and you can see the vestibulospinal tracts descending down from that. Again, it's going to originate in the vestibular nucleus, vestibulo, and the destination is the spinal cord. So we can follow those down right here. They go through the medulla into the spinal cord, and then you can see they're going to go out to skeletal muscle. 
You'll also notice that for both the reticulospinal tract and the vestibulospinal tract, uh, the innervation of skeletal muscles is ipsilateral. So notice that both the half of the reticular formation and the particular vestibular nucleus are on the same side as the skeletal muscle that they ultimately control. Now, the vestibular nuclei receive input from the organs of balance, so in the inner ear of the vestibular apparatus. So we have the ears up here somewhere. They're feeding information to the vestibular nucleus, and then the vestibular nucleus can make adjustments to skeletal muscle in order to maintain balance. So what happens if you lose your balance, right? Well, you need to get some muscles to contract to maintain your balance. So any loss of equilibrium is sensed via that vestibular apparatus. So the semicircular canals, the utricle, the saccule, all that stuff that we've talked about in past videos, the organs of balance, they send information to the vestibular nucleus and can indirectly uh, modify the tone and the amount of contraction that we see in certain muscles in order to maintain balance. And so the skeletal muscles that they control are ipsilateral, as we just mentioned, and muscles that control balance and posture. And these are going to be anti-gravity muscles, so flexors of the arm, extensors of the leg. These are muscles that help to maintain balance. So overall, these are muscles that help maintain balance and also help maintain erect posture. Now, I mentioned that there were two separate pathways here for the vestibulospinal tract. There's a medial portion and a lateral portion. The medial portion contains uh, nerves that go out to the neck and the upper back. So, for example, the suboccipital muscles, uh, the splenius capitis, splenius cervicus, and the erector spiny muscles of the cervical spine and upper thoracic spine, these are going to be controlled through the medial portion of the vestibulospinal tract. And then the lateral portions of this actually go to the extremities. So flexors of the arm, uh, extensors of the legs, so like the gluteus, like gluteus maximus, gluteus medius. And on the note of gluteus maximus, that is the major muscle in humans that helps us with maintaining erect posture. Other animals that walk on four legs don't have near a, as large, relative to the body size, gluteus maximus because they're not upright. We have to maintain this bipedal erect posture so our gluteus maximus needs to maintain a certain degree of contraction when we're standing. And part of that is the vestibulospinal tract. And depending on any loss of posture or balance, the gluteus maximus and medius and even minimus, the tone of those muscles can be modulated to help maintain posture and maintain balance. We beat that horse to death. In the next video, we'll talk more about the rubrospinal tracts and the tectospinal tracts. Those are a little bit less complicated than these two. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the reticulospinal and vestibulospinal tracts. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.